right, so we've got power going to it. We've got our fluids filled. We do not have any of our electronics hooked up yet. So we're just gonna turn it over and make sure that the, that the engine maybe just turns over. I think that's the important thing here. So let's just see. Nice work. I like it. Yeah. Oh no. What is it? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> All right, we are trying to install this CSL carbon fiber air intake setup. And we're just trying to understand where the interferences are yep. so far. Um, so looks like we do might have one. Yep, right here. We're yeah. uh, one cylinder away. We need to get at least four more centimeters that way. <laughs> What's it hitting? Or two more centimeters that way, the heater hose. Bonk, bonk. Heater hose. A little bit of muscle we were able to get these in and now we're actually now battling with the charcoal canister where I had identified its location to be and that's under there and you can see that that thing is hitting so we need to uh, move the charcoal canister to a better location. All right so we've got our carbon canister installed with our plumbing going one to one back to the fuel tank and then this one is going to our purge valve which is located right down there. The purge valve has an electrical connection to wire solenoid controlled by the DME and the other side comes up and into here on the out on the uh, up tick side of the ICV, which it in and of itself is installed as well. We've got our tubing, our uh, our wiring that's going to the coolant sensor here. We've got our oil pressure here. So we've got uh, we we have to actually sheathe these wires, but we are basically ready to install the intake, which is good. So um, everything's looking up so far. All right, so we've got the intake loosely installed right now. We've got most of the wiring on the engine side done. Um, we you know, still have our PCV system that we have to install, although it doesn't look like it's gonna fit. <laughs> so we're gonna have to figure that out. Um, we've got wiring in the engine bay to do and uh, in the uh, inside to do, and I think that we're gonna be okay for a first start. Um, one other thing that we did do is we checked for fuel pressure and we do have fuel going into the regulator and out of the regulator into the rail. So the fuel rail is actually pressurized. Um, so we need to, yeah, let's take a look inside. Looking at the wiring in here, everything is looking pretty good. It looks a little bit complicated, but don't be, um, we've got a lot of, see, this is all automatic transmission wiring. So this is all gonna, is not really part of the wiring harness that we're, we're concerned about. We do have a couple of um, connectors that we still need to install. Or do we? Onto the DME. I mean, we're gonna just try, I think. I don't think that there's really much else that we need to do. Powers and grounds are installed. Although actually, no, 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 it's not. This ground here needs to be installed on the ground and I think we're gonna be okay. I think it should maybe just fire up or whatever, but we'll see. So what we're gonna do is, um, Dan, I want you to turn that and I have a concern about this being the actual fuel pump. This actually is what should be turned on with the fuel pump, but this connector doesn't fit into that. So I'm gonna have to do some electrical work, but I just want to make sure, I mean, we can probably start it with this, but I don't think that that's gonna work. Let's see. I gotta pick up the battery. Oh yeah, yeah, okay. sorry. Done, let's see what this, this thing fires up. <laughs> No, and I think it might be because, again, that does not have power. So I want to just do uh, power to this, and Dan, maybe you can yeah, here. do that. Yeah. Now, can you turn the key? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. yep. Okay. That's, that's fuel pump. So I need to do a little bit of rewiring, and I think we should be in good shape. All right, so we just jigged up this wiring here to just push on. I think we've got the right wires going to the fuel tank now. This is the fuel pump, and let's try starting it again. Nope. Initial code read, no reset. Because this is an automatic harness, I suspect that this is an automatic DME, and I wanna, I have an extra DME I wanna swap it with. So I'm gonna take this DME out, I'm gonna swap it with a different one and see if that makes a difference. All right, so the other DME is now uh, added or replaced. Um, this is my OBD2. Let's give it a start, see if that fuel pump goes on. 
The fuel pump did not go on. Maybe it's at pressure. Could be. Let's give it a start. Nope. Nothing. Okay. No problem. Uh, we'll keep on figuring it out. Well, looking through the engine and checking all my connections, looks like this was not fully connected. Now it is. Hoping that that might be part of the problem. Let's give it another shot. Fuel pump primed. Nope, that wasn't it either. So one of the things that's kind of got me about this is that um, there are three powers that are running down from power, right? So you got these three here. That's basically going to the positive battery. One is going to the OBD2 port. One is going to the EKP relay. And then one is going to this guy, right? Power adapter. And that single small gauge wire is being wide and spliced into all of these high gauge wires, which provide power to everything else on the DME in order for it to operate. And that includes the injectors, the coils, um, and all the other functionality that this DME needs to do. But the injectors and the coils are the big ones. And if there's not enough power going to them, the coils are not going to work. So, and I think that that might be part of my problem. So I wanna take this and see if I can wire this up into a larger power so that it actually gets the power that it needs. And the DME, when it does its switching, will actually open the injectors. Because right now, because right now, if I open up these injectors, uh, open up the throttle body and see inside, those are still bone dry. So the injectors aren't even opening. And I confirmed that the coils aren't even turning on um, when being commanded. So I think that there is some sort of a power um, starvation issue. Now I also have power coming in from here. This is a, uh, the C101 has switched power. Um, and uh, that comes from the key and that turns things on as well. Like switched power goes and turns on all those relays. But the switch power is not supposed to be providing the power to the engine and maintain it. It's the, it's the constant power that is actually providing that. But the switch power turns on the relays that turns the switch power on. <laughs> Let me rephrase that. The switch power does nothing more than allow you to turn the relays on. And the DME switches ground also is turning relays on, which takes the constant power then and transmits it to parts of the engine. Put this up, just like that. And let's turn the key here. All right, everything seems to be firing up. Um, I was looking at some ICV, I'm sorry, TPS stuff too. So let's just do that and that, and let's get it started. Let's see if this makes a difference. If it doesn't, well, I guess, of course, we're just gonna be back to the drawing board. Nope, nothing. The fuel pump is kicking on. So I know that the fuel pump is working and I know it's getting fuel. It's just that the injectors are not turning on. We'll keep on working it. So you can see I'm changing my clothes yet again um, because <laughs> it's been days. Uh, over the course of days, I've been really trying to troubleshoot this thing. And I need to make sure that I have, you know, three major things, air, fuel, and spark. So let's check to see if I have spark. And um, I suspect that the injectors aren't opening. And I think that, the, uh, that, that if you can see, I have some starter fluid right there. I wanna spray that into the throttle body. And if it fires up, then I know that I have, I have spark and spark is good. So the DME is sending spark. Um, and if that's the case, then why isn't it sending fuel, right? Why isn't it sending fuel? So let's see if this thing works. All right, so um, if I spray a little bit. Okay. And give it a start. See what happens. All right. So it did, it fired up, it fired up. But that's it. Um, I was pushing the pedal. Oh, turn this off. I was pushing the pedal and nothing was happening. So even though that the DME 
it has spark and I'm not getting fuel. I'm also not getting throttle position. So I don't know if there's some sort of calibration I need to do. Um, I will say this, this TPS is brand new. This TPS is brand new. I have crank position, obviously. Um, and um, the throttle actuator itself is brand new. So there's, there might be some sort of procedure I need to do or whatever, but I'm uh, getting closer, getting closer. So now that we've tried the starting fluid uh, aspect here and we've gotten spark, we know that, then it's basically just a fuel injection issue. But I think it's more than that because we've got a P1637 code, which is essentially TPS. So there's a TPS here. There's a uh, throttle actuator here, which is a two pin. And there's a TPS right here. On the S54 engine, this is what that schematic looks like. And we're gonna check out the pinouts on the motor, on this TPS and that TPS, and they're all going to 6,003. So we're gonna go and do a pinout check to make sure that the wiring itself is good. Because right now, I suspect that if there's a key on, only when you key on, it immediately has that code, is gotta be something that it's trying to read initially like some sort of resistance and it's not getting it. It's like a, it's an open or something. So there's got to be some break in the wire or a push pin or something. So on the DME, um, we've got uh, five connectors. And from the bottom up, you'll see that that gray connector is X6001. Then above that, you've got X6002. Then you've got that big one, X6003. And the one with all the blue wires going into it is X6004. That's your body connector for harness related things to the chassis. And then you have X6005. X6005 on the top and one on the bottom are typically powers and grounds. Um, it also provides the grounding for the coils and the injectors. Everything else are the small gauge sensor wires, most predominantly for the engine on X6003. And that's the, co that's the connector that we're gonna end up exploring today. All right, so one of the things that we found here while going through all this wiring is that the two TPSs rung out correct. So there's three wires, a power, five volt power, there's a ground, and then there's a signal wire on each of those two TPSs, and they're good. But then there's a two pin wire for a two pin connector for the actual throttle actuator. And that actually goes to 6001. Now this wiring harness is very hokey. There were actually two 6001s. And this one is, the, this is the gray one that I cited to earlier in the video. This one was the one that was plugged into the uh, actual um, uh, DME. And that actually has five wires on it, which it shouldn't. It's got a couple grounds. It's got this green wire, which is the signal for the, for the injectors, which is kind of odd because uh, the injectors aren't working. And it's also got two powers here um, that... Um, that's it. That's basically all that this has. But the X6001 actually should house the two wires for the throttle actuator, which it doesn't. And then I found this. This is another connector that also is keyed similarly for X6001, and it does have all the wires. In fact, this connector should have every wire populated for functionality with the exception of pin three, which is this guy, because this is only for SMG use. So this is an automatic harness. This makes perfect sense. So we do have a couple of things to do since there are some clipped wires for powers and grounds. I wanna ring out the two pins on this with Dan um, to make sure that the two pins on the engine bay on the actual throttle actuator would connect to these two pins. And once we do that, we'll hook up our power and ground and we'll give it a start. All right, so we've got Okay, we're good. Um, Dan, okay, so what, what, what pin number are you looking for me to be on? Uh, I'm on the white wire, pin nine. Okay, ready? Yep. Got it. Okay, and then I'm jumping over to red, pin two. Red, pin two. Okay, ready? Okay, so now that we have continuity um, from the actual throttle actuator to this connector, I know for a fact that this connector is the one that should be plugged in. And because we've got some clipped wires here, we need to splice these to power and ground appropriately. Um, it's just these two, so it should be pretty easy to do. And I think we'll be in great shape. So we've uh, pinned out and fixed all of the wiring, uh, the cut wiring on the X6001. We've got all the pins correctly populated and we have 
our red and white wires that go to the throttle actuator, uh, the motor itself. So we're going to plug all this stuff into the DME. And I think that we should do our crank and see if it's, see if this thing fires up. <laughs> did it just, did it do it? Did it check? It did? Yeah. All right. I think this is going to work guys. <laughs> yeah. Look at that. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. I'm going, to, I'm going to uh pressurize the fuel rail okay dan would you act i think that this is loose but would you act actuate one of those and this is held tightly so i can't do anything just push put the power yep. and ground to that injector if you can get the in there it and it should you should hear a little something when you do yeah did you hear that yep let me that was the it. injector actually yeah do the other do, see if you can do more Listen, listen carefully. Yeah, you just relieved the pressure of the fuel rail with the first one, so the rest of them are not really gonna let much fuel through because the pressure is gonna be too low by then. But uh, we'll just verify they're working. Yeah. It's actually work when we put tw 12 volts to them. And now Dan's gonna take a look when I crank, it might actually start because we do have a little bit of fuel in there, Dan. So um, I wanna see if you actually get are getting the injectors to fire um, from the harness. Ready? <laughs> Nothing? So what we found was that the, um, the one fuse for the fuel injection here, which is that 30 amp right there, was blown. Um, I thought I checked all the fuses earlier, but maybe I didn't. So we ended up replacing that fuse, and I wanted to put this um, relay back in so that the power that's coming from the power rail now is going into the injector uh, relay, and it's actually providing that power to the injectors themselves. So Dan is over there, and he's going to measure with a test light to make sure that this is working. You ready, Dan? Let's see if I can hear that click, and you should be good to go. Ready? Okay. Got it? Let me see. Yeah. There it is. Okay, so I think that we feel pretty good about getting the start going. Let's try it again. Why everything tested good and then didn't. Yes, it would. And what we think we found is that this rail was not fully pushed on. It wasn't fu pu fully seated on there and that there was an intermittent connection going on between the connectors and the injectors, which could cause a voltage spike, which translates to a current spike, which translates to a broken fuse. And if multiple of those are doing it at the same time because the whole thing wasn't pushed down correctly, well, that could be just enough current to blow that fuse. All right, so we tested the throttle actuators. We know that they're working. We made sure that we have power going to the injectors. We tested that now that we've fixed that fuse. We've taken the rail, the, the electronic rail on the injectors and pushed it down really good so we know that now we have power going to the injectors. Um, let's give it a first start and see how this thing runs in idles. That's good. Yep, everything's good so far. You hear the pump? Okay, yeah, don't like that sound. <laughs> don't like that sound at all. Um, but it definitely ran um, and it started. So, yeah, good deal. All right, let's give it one more good start. 